Hi, this is Sean Shaw with Dinner and Dialogue. Again, thank you for tuning in to another episode. This evening we have Mr. Timon Kyle Durrett from the hit show Queen Sugar, where he plays Davis West. A man that the show is phenomenal, and it's a it's a runaway hit, and Oprah has done it again. I've I've watched every episode mm -hmm. at least twice. Oh, word. Because you know you have because sometimes you miss something. Yeah. You know you have to go back and say, it's truly did you see TV? Uh, <laughs> and uh, every episode you end up you know calling someone and say did you see mm -hmm. you know that episode or did you see this yeah, uh, congratulations Thanks, again for, uh, for, thank you for being part of such a phenomenal show yeah man I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it man it's uh i think queen sugar is moving the needle not just uh in the entertainment realm but politically you know the socio-political climate today um i think it calls for such artistic representation of the times um it pulls and tugs at your emotions but it also opens you up to again an artistic rendition of what is real right now you know so yeah, it's cool man I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it i'm pretty geeked up you know yeah i mean is it i mean i know you've read the, the script i mean is it as deep as you thought it was going to be when you initially read it and as you you know kind of went from episode to episode we got a little bit more serious. Did you have any oh shit moments? <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, the first episode when you read it, you know, and I love the way they, they captured it. It was written so well that it, you know, it would be very hard to not be able to capture, you know, what was on the page, capture that on film, you know, mm -hmm. cameras for the people to see. And, you know, from the first script, I said, man, you know, uh, this is really, really well written. You know, that, that for me, that's, that's a, it's good. It feels good. It's not necessarily. It wasn't necessarily a determining factor for me whether I, you know, was excited about the job because I, you know, I know who Oprah Winfrey is and you know what she does and what she's about. And I've seen Ava DuVernay's work, you know, and you know, I was like, you know, we, I can't lose here. But then when I read the script, I was hooked, man. And then to go to the table read and see the other actors, you know, really, you know, inject that emotion that was necessary before the visual component came into play. It, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, we got something. It, it just felt right. Everything about it felt right. I know that before you were cast in, you know, Queen Sugar, mm -hmm. you had contemplated on throwing in the towel with the whole acting thing. Yeah. You know, how did you even come to that point where you were just ready to kind of give up on it? Man, it, you know, life got tough, you know, and, you know, I was a personal trainer. Um, for a while, and that's how I, you know, made a living, you know, uh, with personal clients and at the gyms that I worked at. And sometimes, even seasonal, it's just not bringing in the dough, you know. And you get close to an audition, it's something big, and then you get overlooked, and you find out you were number two out of a, th a three guy choice or something like that. And you get so close, and I kept getting closer and closer and closer. But the closer I got, the further I got into, you know, having just falling on hard times. You know, you got the peaks and the valleys. And I was in a deep valley, man. And uh, the day that Ava DuVernay, uh, well, the day that my agent called me um, to let me know that I was being flown out to Los Angeles because I was living in Marietta, Georgia at the time. That day, I was filling out a, a, a job application online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my information wouldn't go through. It wouldn't go through. I kept putting it in there and to get the little asterisk. Right. to say, um, you know, please uh, fill out all sections. Yeah. And they yeah. all filled out. And my, after like the sixth, fifth or sixth try, I just I just pushed my uh, laptop away. And I just was like, I was like, man, I am tired. I am yeah. so tired. God, I'm yeah. tired. Yeah. And meanwhile, my cell phone was updating. Mm. And then the signal, the little symbol popped up on the screen and I noticed it. And then I, um, I turned it on and I saw that I had a voicemail from my agent. Wow. And uh, that next day, um, a little more than 24 hours, I was yeah. in the room with Ava DuVernay. Wow. That's, yeah. I mean, that's divine intervention. Man, right dude, I, I mean. tell people, the way that certain things have happened, I say, you can call it God, you can call it the universe, the oneness, mm -hmm. the, the singularity, you can call it whatever you want. Right. Because, um, you know, uh, by belief, you know, that energy, that, that, that source comes by, uh, goes by many names. So, right. right. But um, something yeah. um, heard me and was like, all right. All right, we gonna go ahead. You gonna we he he's had enough, <laughs> you know. Right, at least right. for now, because right. I was done, bro. Yeah. And uh, you know, there are so many other things that happened from that point, even up to right now. Mm -hmm. um, like 
earlier today. Like certain things I just keep to myself until I can get a full hold of what it really is. Right. Um, but it's still some um, some magical stuff going on. So, yeah, I was almost done, but you know, it's, it was just enough to show me that I, I can't give up. You know, because it was meant for me to be here, in my opinion. Well, that's good. That's good. And, and it's a it's a testament to to your will of not wanting to give up. And uh, I couldn't imagine uh, any of you guys not being in the show is so well casted. You know, yeah. you are Davis West. Yeah, man. And, uh, Thank it's, you. It's, 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 a, it's a great great combination in what uh, Oprah and her team have done as yeah, far man. as putting the right people in the right spots. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, would you say that you find yourself, uh, any of who Timon is in, in Davis? Yeah. Uh, do, yeah, I mean a little bit. Um, you know, of course, I've never, I've never been the superstar athlete, but mm -hmm. I've had my a uh, few times in my life where I've had to try to make things right for you know the wrongs that I've committed. You know, mm -hmm. by no provocation of anyone else, but you know, just under my own volition to say I'm going to just do this because I feel like, and it wasn't the right thing to do. It wasn't necessarily terrible, mm -hmm. um, but it just wasn't right. And you know, you can't you can't gauge what another person's feelings would be, you know, in regard to what you do. So, um, you know, with Ed Davis trying his best to make things right, having messed up so bad in such a public way, um, you know, he's humbled. He's humbled to the point where not doing the right thing and all the time right now would be of even more detriment to not only his, you know, reputation, but his career, his family, um, you know, and you know, especially his relationship with his son, which is you know, very important right now. So, um, it, it it's it's real to me because I've been there, and you know, having to humble yourself because of something that you did that you know and everyone else knows is wrong is it's enough to make you go straight and just you know scares you into reality. You know right. what the, what you could lose behind all of that. Okay, you mentioned that you received a call from Ava uh, in relation to you getting the part, but it had taken um, some time before you yeah. realized that you got it. I mean, how long did that take? Um, I got the call from my agent that I was being flown out to Tess Reed, and it was December, I want to say December 17th, I think. Um, and you know, I went, I flew out again, and I, I uh, read, came back, and it took almost six weeks. It, they called me, uh, Ava called me personally, um, January 20th, and uh, congratulated me on the role. You know, and I had been, you know, I had been waiting, I've been hearing about all these people that they were seeing now, you know, I guess word got around that there's this buzz about this new show that Oprah Winfrey and Ava DuVernay uh, our executive producing, you know, and you know, that tandem, you know, Oprah is Oprah and Ava DuVernay is this rocket ship that has taken off and gone so far so fast. Um, I think the word got around and so, you know, my time to be, uh, to uh, for them to let me know if I had, you know, gotten the role or not, it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and again, I, I kept hearing about all these different people that were being, uh, uh, read me uh, doing test reads for the show for the yeah. same role yeah. and you know I just you know when I, I what I do is I do my self talks mm -hmm. you know it's how I pray you know it's how I supplicate you know I, I speak what I want and I ask how I can be uh, of service or help to someone whose life is connected with mine or whose life I may touch at some point even if it's just for a few minutes and um, you know I was I still was getting frustrated though I kept hearing about all these names that were bigger than mine uh, and I said you know I don't care who they test read I don't care and this is what I would say out loud over and over and over and over and I said I don't care who they test read Ava DuVernay does not see anyone but me playing the role of Davis West and six days later Ava DuVernay said that to me when she called me on January 20th and I remember the day as this is it was an important day and um, when she told me that in that conversation my initial phone conversation with her my first one um, it blew my mind and I said I'll, ne I'll never I'll never doubt myself again I'll never speak negatively even if I'm frustrated yeah. you know it's like if you get a flat tire and you know how to change the tire and you got an inflated full-size spare. Mm -hmm. It's an inconvenience, but it's not the end of the road. It's going to take you a little more work, 
get it done, get it changed, and get back on the road. Um, so I know when I get frustrated, it's because I have such a passion for what I do. And um, you know, to hear those words that I spoke spoken back to me just in you know first person, you know, I mean, you can call it, like I said, it, it was magical for me. You know, and, and it, it further changed my life. You know, as that process started from the day that I test read all the way up to almost a month and a half later. Yeah, it's just a testament of uh, the words that you put out, you know, comes back to you. Yeah. And the energies that you put out is yeah. really reflective on what, what actually happens in your life. Exactly, exactly. It's like, imagine if you were in a, um, a shallow pool of water and you take, thank you, um, and you take um, a stone and you're in that water and that water is still, but you throw a large stone in the, in the water. You might throw it way away from you, but the ripples of that water are eventually going to come back to you and it's going to disturb the water that you're in so I, I look at um, the intention behind the words that I speak you know the intent comes from here your spirit your mind your, your heart your soul whatever you want to call it but the word is the sound um, I was just telling you about the analogy of um, an instrument an instrument played with intent creates music uh, an instrument played with no intent is it can just be noise so you know that noise you have to understand what that sound is is it noise or is it a sound that makes you know beautiful music for me speaking positive um, forward-thinking prosperous um, and protected things um, for my life and the life of those around me you know if I'm gonna get something back I'd rather get that back you know than something you know about how I can't do it or how I'm not good enough or I'll never succeed because I, I don't say that about myself I may, even when I wanted to stop acting for a while, it wasn't because I wanted to, it was because life was happening and not working does not pay the bills. So um, I just trust in, in, in my thoughts and my intentions and my words and um, I put it forth like that. Okay. I got some interesting stuff on here, boy. All right, now you've been in television mm -hmm. and you've been in the movies. You had a small part in the Barbershop. Yep, Barbershop uh, three. Yep. And uh, that was that was a surprise role because when I was watching, I was like, oh, damn it, that's Timon. Yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool, cool. So mm -hmm. do you do you have a preference of between television or? Or the movies? Or do you I, want to do more movies? Well, I like. I want to do more movie roles. Um, I really, I'm, I really want to do some action, like like science fiction action. Uh, I want to learn a martial art, another language, travel to another country, and, and learn another custom, and just get, get immersed into a culture where you know that that movie captures. You know, I'd love to be a part of that. I love action movies, so um, because of the the bigness of it you know it's a lot of fun but uh, with television I like the um, the slow you know pacing you know of, of, of uh, growing into a character and, and, and learning it and developing it and seeing where you know the writers take the stories and where the stories take the characters and where the character takes the actor because you know you always immerse a little bit of yourself into your character, at least I know I do, um, unless I completely want to lose myself altogether, but I think that's impossible for me because what you see is coming from me, so I think it's all connected even if it seems separate, but um, with movies and television, I, I love them both um, equally, but for different reasons, like my amount of love for the bigness of film is uh, tantamount to the amount of love that I have for television for the developmental uh, component to it. Um, like I said, working on a film for one day, you know, you see so much because the sets are usually a little bit uh, more grand, you know, it's like grand things are just yeah. bigger, um, especially depending on, you know, what scene it is. Um, but with television, I've had um, a lot of varied experiences with now being on a series, you know, being a series regular, I'm not just on it as a one time, I'm coming back again and again being part of an ongoing story and that is a lot of fun for me because it's like life you know um, with Davis West you know Davis West is allowing Tim and Kyle Durrett to learn both Tim and Davis 
uh, in the, in the, uh, with 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 uh, the fact that Dave is, is this superstar professional athlete, someone that I've never been, but someone in that position who's been thrust into uh, a state of such humility. Uh, he's not used to that, you know, and I'm definitely not used to being humbled as a superstar athlete the way Davis has so it's allowing me to kind of see where where that that person where the character would go and as the actor I want to embody where that person would go you know imitate that that the life within the art if you will and uh, you know but that's that's you know it's, I like I like them equally you know movies want to do a lot of action or drama mystery even comedies um, television the same is being able to, you know, convey a clear uh, and emotion-jerking message um, for anybody who watches it uh, is so much fun to me. I like when people give me those sneers and jeers in public. And, you know, I had a lady punch me in the arm walking out of the, <laughs> the post office. You know, walked past and gave me a little jab, and then I turned around. She had her back to me, but she gave me a little, a little mama point, like oh, okay. same on you. You know, so. Um, you know, it just lets me know that, you know, the viewers are, you know, they are attached, they're emotionally mm -hmm. uh, invested. Right. And it just, to me, you know, not to toot my horn, but it lets me know that, you know, maybe I'm doing something that's enjoyable, something that makes them want to watch, you know, week after week. You know, not necessarily good, but something that they can relate to. You know, because not all life is good. You know, the stuff that Davis West did on the show is not good, but people are drawn to it because somebody right now is Charlie Bordelon, somebody right now is Nova, someone is Michael, Ralph Angel, Hollywood, Aunt Vi, Blue. Mm -hmm. You know, someone is Davis West right now going through something. Um, maybe not that rape scandal, but there is a Davis West out there. There was someone who was in a high position right now who has to make amends for something that he or she has done. And you know that art imitating life, imitating art, you know, and that cyclical um, relationship between the two is what I enjoy the most about film and television. Because you know you get to tell stories, man, that people uh, love and want to see again and again. You know, I'm I'm having fun, man. All right. Well, thank you again for uh, spending time with us a little bit, a little dinner and dialogue, Tim. We will definitely stay tuned into Queen Sugar on Wednesdays and and see what. Interesting things develop with Davis's character. We're looking forward to that. And uh, again, thank you again for for sitting down and breaking bread with us. Oh man, no problem. And you know, the uh, dinner and dialogue. When you guys first reached out to me, I didn't know what it was. And uh, this is one of the most comfortable and enjoyable interview experiences that I've had. And I'm like, they on the summit. If you all get it, anyone out there, celebrity or otherwise, gets invited. To have an interview with Sean Shaw, or whomever with dinner and dialogue, I'm telling you, super cool. Sean is behind the camera right now. Y'all can't see him. Man, this dude cool as ice cream for real. Um, you know, I'm just glad to you know to be uh, in a position to be invited to talk about my life, my career, in such a comfortable and welcoming uh, and fulfilling atmosphere. Um, so thank you to dinner and dialogue. It was awesome.